Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I'm sitting outside of my children's ballet class and I'm gonna give you a super short live of just something to think about as I've had some conversations today about a handful of people just throwing up their hands going, I quit. Um, oh, makes me so sad. But like the conversations today have been around like, I'm quitting, this is too hard. Bear with me. I'm going to walk you through like how long they've been doing it or the conversation around the most recent post that I shared with you about the, I think they were labeled like a keto snack and there's some cane sugar in it. And, and we're going to talk about perfection for a second. So this isn't going to be a long live. Hop on. Where are you tuning in from? How are you doing? How is your week? And I just want to give you just one little nugget to think about. That's it. Okay. And the nugget is simply this. Uh, well, here's the phrase and then the idea. And the idea, the phrase is, don't mess up good for perfect. First of all, my name is Stephanie. If you're brand new, <laughs> listen, uh, there are times where I, I'm, just so you know, I am a mom. I have four girls. If you are new, I would love to meet you. Post new below. And I'm I'm not a fluffer. So what that what that means to me is I'm very much a get to the point. I'm going to tell you as it is. I'm going to tell you what I think. Hopefully it's correct. Um, I'm not like a, I'm going to make like a feel good person. Well, I don't feel like that at least. I'm very much, if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you a straightforward answer. If you don't ask me a question, I'm going to give you a straightforward answer. Sometimes that works great for me. Sometimes it does not. But I want to give you a phrase to think about. And the phrase is, don't mess up good for perfect. And what I mean by that is this. One of the messages out of many that I get on a daily basis was, hey, it's been day two. I feel like crap. I'm going to quit. This isn't for me. Day two. I often get, hey, it's been two weeks. Oh, I've been doing this for a month. I haven't seen the scale move. I'm going to quit. And I just want to give you an understanding of something. First of all, remember, you did not get to where you are today overnight, in two days, in four weeks. So it takes time. We talk about that all the time. But I just want to give you an understanding of when you're trying to be perfect in everything that you do, right? In your food, uh, making sure it is 100% strict keto, which I commend you if you do that please hear me on this. There are some people that will eat a very strict keto diet, period, and uh, like no ounce of anything. And that's awesome. A majority of people that I'm working with are eating the best they can. Buns off burgers, croutons off the salad. They're grabbing a lettuce wrap. They're drinking more water. They're going for walks. They're flipping it. Oh, you know, they're flipping over whatever they have. And they're, you know, they're looking at the ingredients and they're going, oh, four carbs or uh, not a lot of sugar. Okay. They're choosing the best they can. So I just want to give somebody a peace of mind that if somebody chooses to have something like the snack that I shared earlier, these keto coconut things that are from Costco, are they labeled keto? Yes. Is everything that's labeled keto perfect keto? No. But if you're doing a lazy keto or a dirty keto or a low carb, it is a better option. What I mean by that is some people will get so frustrated because they'll look at this keto this keto snack and they'll go, oh, there's one gram of cane sugar. Or maybe it doesn't even have the grams, but it says it in the ingredients, right? And so it's like a minuscule amount. Will it raise your insulin? Probably. But, or will it overdo something in your body? Yes. If you're a strict keto person, I understand. If you're not, then I want you to think about something just related to the keto snack that I'm talking about, and you can relate it to anything. If somebody gets so caught up in being perfect and they get so frustrated they're going to quit, wouldn't you rather have them feel like they can make a better choice and grab that keto snack that might have like a 0.3 ounce cane sugar versus like just giving in, throwing up their hands and grabbing a, an entire sleeve of Oreos? You yourself, right? So I've had people get on me because I'll share things like low carb wraps or when we travel, uh, if we, if the only place I had to eat is McDonald's and I didn't pack enough like food, 
I will grab an egg McMuffin and I will take off the muffin and eat the eggs and the sausage and the cheese. I will do that. And think about this. For those people who would go, oh my goodness, I can't believe that you did that. I would go, well, if I don't do that, my next option is just to binge on 20 nuggets or a Big Mac and fries, right? So I'm choosing the better option. The same thing with your snacks and your food in your everyday life. And let's just be real. Like our life in this year has been nothing but normal, right? And so on top of uh, work and your children and your life and your family and staying home and the news and social media, on top of everything, this should be the time that you can go, you know what? I'm going to work on my health and I'm going to work on being the best version of me But it's not perfect, right? Because if you go for perfection, that only lasts so long. That will last you a short amount of time until you get to maybe where you want to go or until you get fed up or emotional or something happens and somebody yells at you because you were eating that keto snack that has a teeny bit of cane sugar in it. And now you're like, screw it. I'm going to eat the Oreos. I don't even care. No, let's just go out for ice cream. Dairy Queen, please. Like, Some people get so hopeless because they go, I can't do anything right, right? That was labeled keto. I don't know how to read. I don't know how to read ingredients. I'm just starting. I thought it was fine, right? So remember, do not mess up good for perfect. I would eat the keto coconut snacks. Now, here's a little tip for you. When you are eating a already prepackaged keto snack, Just flip it over, and if you paid attention to one thing, pay attention to the portion control. And if it says you can have one-fourth cup, that is your allotment of that snack. So I would label out one-fourth cup, and that would be my snack. No different than nuts, right? You can have nuts. You can overdo nuts. Does anybody ever grab the container of, like, mixed nuts, which I love, and I'll set it on the table, and, like, my one handful turns into, like, eight handfuls, and then my husband's like, are you going to eat the whole container? And then I ate a lot of them right? So there's little things that you can do to help you on your journey. When you get a low carb or keto snack or uh, nuts or different things, just pre-portion them into little snack bags. Here's your little tip. Pre-portion them and grab one snack bag. That will help you stay on track. It is a better option, right? And so I hope that was helpful. Don't get frustrated. Don't get overwhelmed. Please don't quit after day two or week four. Because remember, you didn't get here today overnight. You're not going to get to where you go overnight. This is a year journey. Like if you can give this a year of a lifestyle and a process and learning, you will get there. Common sense. Remember, common sense. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Drink water first and see if you're hungry, right? Make sure you're being aware. Am I eating because I'm bored or the clock says to eat or am I really hungry? And then... Look around. What are my best options to choose from? Did I pack a lunch? Do I have to go through a drive through Can I take off the bun? Uh, should I go home and make something? Don't mess up good for perfect. Should I have the keto labeled snack even though it might not be perfect? Or should I have the Oreos? Which one? Right? So I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys have a great day. We're always here to help. Please reach out with any questions that you have. And I think that's it. So I'm going to go. The girls are almost done with ballet. We have 10 little girls in our home because our friends are staying with us. So we have four daughters. They have six daughters. There are 10 and uh, obviously two moms. So the house is full of girls and then these two dads. (laughs) And it's been so fun. So we both homeschool. We can homeschool together. They traveled up to stay with us for a week to 10 days. It's been a lot of fun already. So I'm going to go cook for everybody. We've been having, and what's great is we can, I can cook a lot of different things for big families. If you ever want to know basic, simple meals, when you're having guests, we have tacos, we had uh, meat, uh, we're doing lots of grill stuff. We have the keto lasagna, which you can have, which we use the, the egg thins for the shells. Lots of different things you can do to feed lot, you know, a large amount of people and keep it super simple, not strict keto, but low carb, a better option. That's it. So I hope you guys have a great day. Lastly, share with me what you're having for dinner. I love to ask because people love, well, it's not supper time yet, but what are you having for dinner? Share below because people love to scroll through and get ideas from you.
I didn't even plan that. So I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.